we've got. We're going to look at the final, well, this is pretty much the final scale that we've got. The rest of the scales that we've got for <coughs> integration are not integrating new types of functions. They are just like different kind of scenarios. So there's not really any, this is the last type of function to learn about integrating, okay? And we want to integrate something that looks like this. Now, this is going to sound a bit stupid because we talked about this in the last lesson. Can you tell me a rule of integration here that you cannot use and why you cannot use it? Muzuki. You can't use the chain rule. Can't use the reverse chain rule because... Because the derivative of x plus 1 is an x squared. Oh, Good. The integral, integral of x plus 1 is... No, no, no. The derivative of x plus 1 is not x squared. Okay, so this one, you cannot do the reverse chain rule because the derivative of this is not this. Ismail, what else can I not do? Okay, yes, good. I cannot split this one. I cannot split this. I cannot split it into this because that's not how fractions work. Okay, so we're not allowed to split this up. So that's another technique that we can't do. Is there any other technique that we can't do here? What's another technique we know about? <laughs> What do we call that one where you, there's another integration technique that we obviously can't use here? We could use substitution here, okay? We could use substitution. This is, substitution is one of the skills that kind of goes across all of integration. It can be used for any of them, but it's often harder to spot, and we don't really want to do substitution unless they've told us to do it. So substitution is one that we could use. What do you think you'd use for the substitution? What would you be, yeah? I agree. I would make u equal x plus 1 and would see if that, if that would do something. Probably it would. That would be a good substitution to do. And there's another one that we can't use here. Quotient. Not quotient. Quotients for differentiation. What did you say? By parts. Yeah. We, by parts. We could, by parts. I think you might have missed by parts. You've got some work to do there. So you could maybe try by parts, but it's going to be a mess, OK? It's just going to be a big mess. It doesn't look like by parts. It doesn't look like two things being multiplied together. So I've said, how do we deal with this? And I've said the clue is in the title. It's a top-heavy algebraic fraction. Now, remember, top-heavy algebraic fractions is when you've got the thing on top, the, the degree of it is higher than the degree on the bottom, or <coughs> the same, or if the degree is the same that we've got here. So what do you think we should do? <coughs> Division. We're just going to do polynomial division to make it into something different, OK? So this is now like a callback to when we did the things on partial fractions, when we had improper fractions. So I'm going to do, I'm going to deal with this by doing x squared divided by x plus 1. Oh, my favorite. So we multiply it by an x, and that gives us x squared plus x. We subtract them. So you get they cancel, and you've got 0 minus x. So you get minus x. What does this minus x then represent? It's like the remainder, isn't it? So we know that when you do this divided by this, you get x, and then you get the minus x <coughs> over x plus 1. No, that's, I haven't finished the division. Why is no one telling me I haven't finished the division? I told you I hate polynomial division. What do I, what do, I do with this? Sorry, guys. I should have done a minus 1 as well. Here's me making a mess of this question, because we've got the, this bit here. So if I do this multiplied by minus 1, I get minus x minus 1. Now when I do the subtraction here, No, I do this. I do, I do it underneath here. This is why I've made a mistake. It looks like this. Sorry, I told you I can't do polynomial division. This is just not how I do this. At least, you've, at least you've told me I'm wrong. Now when I subtract them, this subtract this is nothing. This subtract this is 1. OK, finally. So we've said that x squared over x plus 1 is equal to x minus 1 plus the remainder 1 over x plus 1. OK, is that, is that correct? Yes. Yeah, I think that's correct. So if we're going to try and integrate x squared over x plus 1 with respect to x, that's the same thing as integrating x minus 1 plus 1 over x plus 1. 
with respect to x. So if you ever see a fraction and it doesn't look like you can do the reverse chain rule, you've got two options. Well, you've got three options. <coughs> We've got four options. Um, one of them is to do a division. One of them is to do partial fractions. One of them is to do substitution. And one of them is to split it into two fractions, which we can't do for this one because of the fact that the denominator is like this. If it was the other way around, if it was x plus 1 over x squared, this is what I mean, that you could split it into an x over x squared plus a 1 over x squared. But you can't do it for this one, so it's not really an option. So we did algebraic division in this case, and now we can actually finish off by doing the integration. I did a terrible job of my polynomial division, but you wouldn't do that because you're all better at it than I am. And this integrates to this, this, this. What does this integrate to? Half x squared minus x plus ln of x plus 1 plus c. And that's, the, that's what that integrates to. Be prepared. Things that look nice will integrate to something that do not look, they don't look good. And the trick here is noticing all the things you can't do. Okay, it sounds really, really silly, but all the things you can't do will help you start thinking all the things that you can do for this kind of question. The two things this question came down to is either algebraic division or substitution. <coughs> and obviously, this is looking easier, apart from the fact I can't do it. Uh, algebraic division is going to be easier than substitution. Okay, so get that bit finished written off, and we're going to have a look at, I think, just one more question, and then we'll just do some practice. Um, for the rest of this topic, okay? This is literally the last thing we're learning about on integration. That's, we're not done with integration. We're done with, we're done with all of the techniques of how to integrate functions. We're then going to now like, put some problems with it. But we now know how to integrate everything, unless you do further math, in which case there's a few more things. But. <laughs> I hope you're all better at algebraic division than me. It's not difficult, though, <laughs> to be better than me at this. I just never learned it properly. Not pro didn't learn it properly at school. OK, I'm going to look at the next one. Well, next two. So this time we've got x over x minus 1. And I've said contrast this with x minus 1 over x. If I had x minus 1 over x, what integration technique could you use? Good. You could just separate this into two different fractions. You should always look out in case that's something that you can do, because the denominator is so simple here. This one, there's no separating. You can't separate it when it's in the denominator. You can just substitute some numbers in and see that it doesn't work. We also um, we could do substitution if we wanted to. We could make u equal to we could make u equal to x minus 1. So if you want to do that, we can try that in a second. Um, by parts is probably going to become really messy. This doesn't look like by parts. If you ever have a fractional thing, it's not going to be by parts, really. So we'll start off by doing our algebraic division. So we've got x minus 1 divided by x, which means you get one lot of that. So you just have x. This take away this is nothing. This take away this is minus 1. Have I done it right? Have I done it right? Oh, I'm doing it the wrong way around. It's the fraction. The oh. I can't do this. I can't do algebraic division. This is right. And it's a 1 here. And then I get x minus 1. And then I get 1. So, oh my gosh. So it's equal to the integral of 1. <laughs> plus 1 over x minus 1. Yeah? Yeah. OK. <laughs> Which is equal to? x plus ln of e uh, x minus 1 plus c. OK, good. Should we do a quick substitution as well? Just to show you how you can do it with substitution. OK, so let's do substitution here. We're going to let u equal x minus 1. So u plus 1 is equal to x du by dx is equal to um, one. One. 1. So du yeah. equals dx. 
So the integral of x over x minus 1 dx is equal to, well, x is u plus 1, x minus 1 is u, and dx is du. Now you can split that one. So you get u over u, which is 1, plus 1 over u, du, which integrates to u plus ln u plus c, which is equal to u, which is x minus 1, plus ln of u, which is x minus 1, plus c. Now we've got some things that are the same. We've got the x, we've got the ln of x minus 1. The minus 1, though, is going to be incorporated in the c, because the constant, this constant, is going to be 1 bigger than that constant. Yeah? So it's the same thing. Obviously, uh, if you can do this, this is easier. <laughs> this just isn't how I do algebraic division. I would just, I just I'm not going to even go into the way I do it. But I don't do it like that. Oh, please, are you going to make me do this one as well? We'll do it. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, fine. <laughs> I can do this. So, Let's go, so you gotta push yourself. <laughs> obviously, this is not the reverse chain rule obviously because we're learning about algebraic fractions. There's obviously no partial fractions that can happen here either because we've got nothing to spread it into. So I'm going to do, do you just, please tell me if I do go wrong. I'm going to divide it by x plus 1. Yeah. That divided by that. So I need, oh no, I should have done this, shouldn't I? Yeah. I should do it where I leave some gaps. Plus 0x squared plus 0x plus 2. Mm. It makes it easier, I think. Yeah. So it's x squared. So I get x cubed plus x squared. Then I subtract them and I get zero. Mi I get minus x squared. Then I plus. So you want me to bring everything down? Okay, cool. Thank you for teaching me this. So then I multiply this by minus x to get minus x squared. So I get minus x squared minus x. And then when I subtract them, okay. I get plus x. plus x. And then I bring down the 2 as well. And then I multiply this by 1 to get x plus 1. And then I subtract that, and I get 1. So I've done it? Yeah. Cool. So I now get that this thing is equal to, let's just put a line around this, the integral of x squared minus x plus 1 plus 1 over x plus 1 dx. So I get a third x cubed minus a half x squared plus x plus ln of x plus 1 plus c. Great. That one is definitely going to be easier to do with algebraic division than, than substitution. So you your skill is going to come down to uh, which of those is better. What I'm going to just quickly do to do a bit of a summary now, I'm just going to pull up something that we made before. So let me just go to <coughs> the memory page. So this is what we've now finished everything with integration, basically. So we've done integration by parts, where we kn knew that ln took priority for u. We've got our substitution checklist for the things that we need. We haven't done these two things, but these, there's nothing new to learn for them. It's just me telling you this is how you start the question off. The rest becomes normal. These are the different hints of things that you should be thinking about, OK? Split the numerator. So when you can, that's something you can always do to, to simplify the problem, something to look out for. Reverse chain rule where you know that you've got one thing, which is the derivative of the other thing, same like the numerator is the derivative of this thing, partial fractions, or algebraic division. Your skill will be to recognize which of those things that it is. The hardest time to spot the skill is obviously when it's written as a fraction, because as a fraction, you could either do that, you could do that, you could do that, or you could do that. Or you could potentially do substitution or integration by parts. So the fractional terms are the ones that we find hardest. On our last lesson on integration, we will look at a big mixture of things and you'll work out which one is which. So what you're going to do for me now is we'll do exercise 11G, and I'll write down which questions I want you to have a go at in just a second, OK?